On to stage three of the Dauphiné. 194 kilometers between monistrol sur loire and Le Coteau, and it's one for the sprinters. So theoretically an easier day for Jumbo Visma and their race leader, Christophe Laporte. Il y a des équipes de sprinters qui, euh, qui sont vraiment intéressées par cette étape. Donc euh, je ne pense pas que ce sera vraiment à nous de contrôler. Je ne suis, suis pas parti des favoris pour un sprint comme ça. Donc euh, ça risque de ressembler euh, plus à un sprint massif aujourd'hui. There is a climb inside the last 20k, the Côte de Pinay, but it won't be steep enough to trouble the likes of Sam Bennett and Dylan Trunewagen. I think the climb is more of a, yeah, it's more steps instead of consistent. Um, and then the final, just with a few roundabouts and uh, traffic islands, it'll uh, make it a bit tricky, but um, we should be capable of doing a good job. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we should uh, probably just hold hold back a bit today and uh, try and come late. Yeah, we have a goal. Uh, yeah, now we need to look to the to the other teams, but uh, yeah, we want to pull and uh, hopefully Bora will help a little bit. And hopefully we can make it a bench sprint and I'm there, that will be nice. And yeah, let's see, and otherwise it's a good preparation. Stage three is the longest of the week. And even if it looks pretty flat, there are still over 2,000 meters of climbing. Laporte and Julian Alaphilippe will be eyeing up the bonus seconds at the intermediate sprint because they are currently level on time at the top of the GC. The fast men will then go head to head in the Loire sunshine. Well, today was very much a slow burner, with the lone breakaway rider Mathieu Bergado caught before the live pictures. The peloton were also briefly held up by a protest. Ultimately, there was little to report before the intermediate sprint with 55k to go. The bunch easing along at 35 kilometers an hour during the first two hours of racing, but they did gradually increase the tempo. As expected, Bora Hansgrohe and Jaco Alulu were pacing for Bennett and Hrunewagen, but not too hard. That meant that Jonas Vingegaard was able to get back in pretty easily after this puncture. The intensity began to ramp up as they approached that intermediate sprint in Saint-Foy, Saint-Sulpice. Here goes Seneschal, they're getting set, Laporte is ready to strike, Alaphilippe is waiting, Laporte makes his move, Alaphilippe kicking hard, 51k an hour uphill, Laporte looks good, Alaphilippe right in on the wheel, but on the sprint Laporte takes the three, Alaphilippe takes the two. So Laporte keeping hold of the yellow and blue jersey, and then not for the first time on this kind of stage, there was a crash in the peloton. Lots of riders hitting the deck, and poor old Andrei Zaitz of Astana, Kazakhstan, was forced to abandon. Alaphilippe and Matteo Jorgensen were also caught up in it, but apparently no major damage done. The peloton slowing down again so that everybody could catch up. And soon enough, they were hurtling their way into Lukoto, with the sprint trains jostling for position. More misadventures for Alaphilippe in the final kilometres. Yesterday's stage winner would have to chase hard to save his second place overall. But save it he did, making contact with under 4k to go. The riders then hitting over 60k an hour on a technical run-in. Oh, a big crash in the centre. Loads of riders come down again. That crash splitting the peloton in two, but the top sprinters were still all in there for the final shootout. Corona Vegan is there, Laporte is also there, Bennett strikes, kicks really hard, makes his move, Wright is there, Sam Bennett, Christophe Laporte, Bennett Laporte on the line, Christophe Laporte doubles up. Christophe Laporte is decidedly the sprinter to beat at this Dauphiné. The Frenchman outpacing Bennett and Kronewagen to take his second win in three days and moving on to 30 career victories. This morning he said he wasn't one of the favourites for a bunch sprint, but he still managed to outgun some of the best in the business and without a proper lead out to boot. Laporte is up to four wins in just 11 race days this season. 
Ouais, elle est un peu, un peu inattendue, on va dire. Euh, bien sûr, je voulais faire le sprint. Moi, j'ai toujours dit que j'étais rapide, mais pas, pas assez pour battre ces coureurs-là. Mais euh, voilà, les choses ont fait que ça m'a souri aujourd'hui. Grand Wagen était un peu bloqué sur la droite, Bennett était un peu en bout de course et ça m'a permis de passer sur la gauche. Laporte taking it as Bennett and Grunewagen were both relegated for an illegal sprint. Trentin was awarded second place ahead of Menton, Hofstetter and Govacar. Laporte extends his overall lead to 11 seconds with Alaphilippe holding on to second place ahead of Richard Carapaz. That is now three wins in three for the French at this Dauphiné. Laporte also has a handsome margin in the green jersey standings, leading Trentin by 30 points. Maxim van Hills slips to third place. After finishing just 43 seconds inside the time cut yesterday, Donovan Grandin got through more comfortably today, even helping to set up Hofstetter for the sprint. He stays in polka dots. Rina Herregotz is still the best young rider by four seconds from Van Hills and he should be looking forward to tomorrow's time trial having come fourth at last year's Belgian Championships. Wednesday is going to be a big day for the GC contenders as they tackle the 31 kilometers against the clock between Cour and Belmont de la Loire. All eyes will be on race favorite Vingegaard but Alaphilippe could also snatch the yellow and blue jersey if he's on a good day. Do join us again for the TT tomorrow and thanks for watching.